Yo, what's going on, guys? I'm Jack from On The Spot Sports, and I'm along with... Tyler from On The Spot Sports. And in today's episode, it's going to be a little a little chill episode. Where we're just going to answer a few questions that you guys have sent in from our Instagram, for both personal and on On The Spot Sports Instagram. But, but first, Tyler, how are you doing? Hey, you know what? I'm doing actually pretty good right now. You know... I think everyone would expect a lot of the same answers during this quarantine, but I just got finished playing some tennis and it felt really, really good because that's one of the few ways for me to get out of the house during this is to play tennis with my dad. And it felt great. I played, I thought pretty well. And so just uh, now chilling at home. So I, I feel good after playing. Uh, that's awesome. How, how's your tennis skills going from uh from la- your last competitive match in high school? You know, in high school, it's honestly pretty interesting. Um, I ended off on a pretty, like, half-and-half half note. I wanted to make the state tournament. I didn't, um, but I thought my coach said it was the best match he saw me ever play. Um, and after that, I mean, it's been, like, I couldn't even tell you, like, the consistency level that I've played after high school. Um, but just in the last couple of weeks – uh, me and my dad have gotten back into it a good amount. And honestly, I don't know how because I've been pretty rusty. Because like I said, after high school, it ended in around the end of May, uh, starting a couple weeks ago. I didn't know how it, I would be. But honestly, I feel like my game has come – like it's gotten a lot better like from a lot of different aspects. So I'm, I'm, I'm surprised. I'll take it. But Yeah, that's awesome, though. At least, yeah. at least it's getting it's- – better than you than you thought you were going to do and hopefully if you just continue that you'll be back in shape where you were when you first when you last ended your last high school competitive match yeah I've hitting the ball a lot more fluently and that's what I think really matters the most is like I already knew that I was like good but I felt like my shots could definitely be a lot more like fluent and stuff but the way I've been hitting the ball is a lot more clean and and smooth and I really really I like I like the way it's going, so. Yeah, for sure. And it's keeping you sane during this uh, whole quarantine time. Oh, yeah. I mean, any I think any any physical activity during this is something to kind of cherish and just kind of, you know, get your mind off for a little bit because, you know, your mind's so wrapped and just, you know, being in the house for a while or basically every day, you know, not doing much. But when you have this kind of physical activity, it's just like, man, you know, you, you feel so loose, you feel better, and it's just kind of just like a wake-up call. It feels yeah. really good, though. Yeah, for sure. And it's the same with me. Like, I've been running every day. I, I run the treadmill sometimes, though, but I sometimes get out of the house, and I do about a lot of uh, body weight exercise for, like, lifts and all that. And it honestly feels great to do that, especially during this time where we were very limited to do stuff. And that it honestly just helps you relax too. Even though it's like a workout, you relax while doing it as well. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. So there's honestly there's nothing bad to say about it either. Like you're focusing on yourself, and like you're focusing on getting better at some things that you like to do. So quarantine honestly isn't that bad of a thing. But I'd much rather be outside with people, with friends. Definitely agree. It gets it gets a little long after a while. You know, like I said, when when there's those days where you don't do anything and you're just sitting around in the house, like God, man, like what? I want, I, I should be doing something else. There, the physical activity is honestly the way to go. But it only gets really bad when, like like you said, it's just sitting around constantly all day. Yeah, exactly, and hopefully this whole thing will end in a, like a month or so and we can do some more uh, live episodes at, from a one-on-one point like some t- like pretty much all throughout the summer now since we're not really doing anything so just do it live like in person yeah i think the live episodes would honestly be really really cool cuz i mean honestly we haven't really done a whole lot to begin with because just time, both of our lives, you know, we got a lot going on. Um, But uh, yeah, definitely over the summer, I feel like that'd be really, really good. I think 
it was maybe our first or second episode we did live. Um, and ever since then, it's only been like one, one or two others, but that will be, that a lot, be a lot more cleaner. It'll be a lot more smoother, but I, I, I agree. I think the live episodes would be really, really good and it'd be easier for both of us, you know, to kind of, yeah. you know. Yeah, absolutely. I believe our first, our first ever episode was live and then the Jeremy Broder interview was also live from, yeah. from school. So that was, that was awesome. And both of them came out really good. So hopefully after all this, get back, get back into that and it'll be all clean. We're trying video chat right now. We usually go off the, off the phone where I put the speaker on and we're doing video chat right now. So we'll see how that's going to go. Yeah. Uh, Let's keep our fingers crossed. Yeah, let's keep our fingers crossed. So, do uh, you want to get started with uh, this inter- this uh, episode? Yeah, let's do it. All right. So, we'll just do, answer like a few like questions that you guys have sent in, and it's like regarding sports, and and there's some that aren't related to sports at all. We could also do some would you rather questions. So, let's do it. All right. Already. All right. So the first question is, who should be the favorite to win the NBA and NHL championship if they start with the playoffs? You want to take that first? All right. Who should be the favorite for NBA and NHL? Yeah. NBA? Uh, you know what? It took me a little bit to think of each uh, – each answer, but I think I got mine pretty easily. The NBA, I think, no doubt, it should be the Milwaukee Bucks. They've been on Giannis. They've been on a just insane pace the rest of the season. I mean, we talk about teams like the Lakers and the Clippers, most notably those two. They've been really, really well too. More so the Lakers, but honestly, I'm not, I know I've been more of a Clippers guy this year, but um. I'm more confident about the Clippers in the Western Conference than the Lakers. I think the Clippers got better at the trade deadline. The Lakers did not, but we'll see. But nobody should overlook what the Milwaukee Bucks have done this year. They've been, like I said, on a tremendous pace. Um, Giannis has been at his MVP form like he has since last year. Chris Middleton has looked just as good. This team, this team is for real, and I think that this year – we're going to see them possibly make a finals appearance, if not maybe a championship uh, appearance, maybe finals win. Uh, after last year's got stolen away by the Toronto Raptors, they don't have Kawhi in the Eastern Conference anymore, so we'll see. But not just about him. I think, though, the Milwaukee Bucks have to be the number one answer for the NBA. For the NHL, too original, though. I mean, I'm, I got to go Boston. Uh, they've just been unstoppable this year. David Pasternak has been hands down one of the best players in the NHL this year. This team, after last year's kind of upset by St. Louis, they have not looked back. They have not turned down, and I think they've gotten better. So I think Boston, there's going to be some vengeance there for them this year, and I think they're going to play with a lot more fire in their veins this year. Uh, But I think right now they've easily been the best team in the NHL. And I think you got to start with the Boston Bruins, one of the original six teams. I, I, I can see that. But for me, for NBA, it probably – I want to say Milwaukee, especially since how good they are and how good it, like Giannis and all them are playing right now. But I also want to go the Lakers because the Lake Show, that's my boys. Respectable. But, so it's, it's a really tough decision, but I think – I think it'll be the Lakers. The Lakers will get a championship this year. That's okay. You got Milwaukee the will put up a, Milwaukee will put up a fight to make it to the championship and get that win. I just I don't really see anyone in the East stopping Milwaukee right now. I think the, there's going to be a lot of competition in the NBA Finals from the West, whether it be the Lakers or the Clippers or anyone else. But I really don't see anyone stopping them in the Eastern Conference this year. Maybe uh, I don't know if Toronto can do it again without Kawhi. Toronto, I think that's more like a 50-50 chance. I think Toronto plays the game they have been playing. They could. But if, like, Milwaukee shows up like how they have in the entire season, Milwaukee's got it, no problem. 
So Toronto right. just needs to put up a fight and it has to play to their best game of the has to play their best game of the season. Yeah. But you know what? I, interesting that you say Lakers, because like I said, I, I I remember from our end of the episode, you were after they just loaded up with superstars, you've been definitely more Lakers and I've been definitely more Clippers. So it's all right. We'll we'll take the we'll take uh, both ends of the spectrum there. Yeah, we'll see. I gotta go with my man uh board man, Mr. Kawhi Leonard, and you gotta go with the Lake Show, Mr. LeBron James. LeBron so James. we'll see. Him. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then for the NHL I, I got to go with the the newest team in the league that has made that has made the playoffs for the last three years, Vegas Golden Knights. They made some huge moves during the trade deadline. Brought in Robin Leonard, the goalie from the Hawks, and that those two, Mark Andre Fleury and Robin Leonard, those are the it's the best two duo for goalies in the entire league. And Vegas just went from went from like good to great to make them competing for a Stanley cup again. And this time I think they will get the, get the cup. Yeah. I find it interesting though, how we both have two different answers and they're from two different conferences. So you say Bucks, I say Lakers, hell make that the final matchup. You, I say Bruins, you say uh, Golden Knight, hell make that the Stanley cup final matchup. I remember Vegas, Vegas, Washington, the first time Vegas was in the, NHL, Vegas made it all the way to the Cup Finals. Yeah, I did. I did the uh, I did the Stanley Cup bracket challenge thing that year. I think I did it last year too, but I I'm not even kidding. Last year was so disappointing. I'm pretty sure I got only one first round series correct. Wow. Um, but the year before that, I actually picked the Golden Knights to win the Stanley Cup, and then when the Capitals won four straight in them, I was like, yeah, you know, good, good run. You don't really see that from an expansion team, you know, the first year of them just being, like, one of the best teams. So It's going to be interesting. We'll see. It's going to be yeah, interesting we'll when uh, Seattle comes in, too, and see how good they're going to be. Yeah. Uh, you know what? That's something that I feel like we should talk about if we do an NHL episode is this Seattle team. It's interesting what is going to be like their limits or for them getting in due to this pandemic. If there are going to be any like, I guess, stoppages for them to get in. That's an interesting topic that we might, yeah. we, we might be seeing. Have to cover that. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll, we will definitely get to an, an NHL episode and we will definitely cover the new Seattle team coming in. It's going to be interesting no matter what, especially since, like, how Vegas has performed their first year. It's I'm curious to see how Seattle, if Seattle will do the same thing or if they will start off like some of the other expansion teams that have came in the league before and, like, slow down before getting better. Yeah, I agree. So, uh, for our next question, uh, which sport will resume activities first? Out of all, like, the major sports that have uh, suspended their season. So, are we going uh, football, baseball, basketball, hockey? We just yeah. could do four major? Yeah. That's a tough one, honestly. This is going to be kind of a – this is going to be a long shot, but I'm going to go for it. I'm going to say the NBA. And I think that they – these fans have been dying for them to try and fit the season in just somehow. They have been very vocal about, we want you to do anything to get this season in. And I was watching uh, ESPN, I believe it was earlier this week, and uh, I don't know if you know him, uh, ESPN NBA slash college basketball analyst Jay Williams uh, was talking about that he thinks he proposed an idea that the NBA playoffs, they should just go right in the playoffs and play all the games on a cruise ship, which I thought was very interesting that, you know, you, you're going right out of the, a cruise ship. Yeah. You're going so out of the box with that. This is how desperate these guys have wanted this, this season to resume. And honestly, like I said, I think that the NBA has a very powerful fan base. Like the players and the fans, that is like the majority of where, all these answers come from around the league. Like the NFL is a GM and coach league. NBA is a players league. MLB is, is really starting to become a players league. NHL is definitely more of a GM's league as well. I, I believe you can corroborate that. Um, but I think the NBA 
it, it, it's not going to be about whether the regulations or the players are clear or not. It is these fans will try to get their season back. And I think that's going to be the ultimate proof. Uh, it's going to prevail them over the top. I wanted to say MLB, but I think that they're just in a really, really messed up situation right now with their season not even starting that I think they got to look over all possible um, – different outcomes for how they're going to start the season compared to like the NBA or NHL. They got less than a quarter of the season left. Yeah, for sure. That, that NBA scenario is really, really interesting doing it on a cruise ship. That's a, that's a little odd. There was another one, I think too, um, playing all the, uh, I think the rest of either the regular season games and the playoffs in Las Vegas, which is a little, a little less, like uh, on the wild side, but it's still, you know, a one, one city situation. So. Yeah. Though, it'll, it'll be a mess to get everything set up too, no matter where they do it. Yeah. yeah. So for me, the, I, I believe the NHL will be the first to resume just cause like how they already have like a bunch of like different plans to like, like to start like playoffs right away to like, they have like a bunch of different scenarios that we covered on the last episode. Right. And I could just see that going through since they already have like an A, B, C, D plan. So it's like one doesn't work. You go to the next. If one doesn't work, if that doesn't work, you go to the next one. So they just have all those different scenarios. So I think that'll definitely help them resume first. Yeah. You bring up a great point. And I remember everything we were talking about in that other episode. Uh, I believe it was earlier this week, was that we I, – I really liked how they were the, – the players, you said, if I'm correct, yeah. were thinking of all these scenarios and on how to resume first. And that's really good when they're taking that initiative to try and see, you know, hey, what can we do to try and bring this back as, you know, as early as possible or as best as possible. And, like, I think that's a great point. So, you know what, I wouldn't be surprised if either one of them do. But, like I said – I've just seen – I've heard just so many wacky ways for the NBA that I'm just like, man, these guys want basketball back. Just finish it out already. It's, ba- it's bad enough we're not already getting March Madness right now. Yeah, that is true. But I just I, – I see either, either NBA or NHL, but my, my vote's for NHL. Respectable. Respectable. So, uh, next question is, uh, where will Cam Newton, Jadavian Clowney, and Janice Winston land this, this uh, offseason? Well – I believe it was uh, this weekend. Um, the best NFL reporter, in my opinion, Adam Schefter, uh, posted something about three former number one overall picks being current free agents, and that is Cam Newton, Jadavion Clowney, and Jameis Winston are all free agents. And I, I might have said some stuff that I not not regret, but I've changed now. I had different answers for each one of them at the beginning of free agency compared to now, I believe I said, uh, I I think I actually picked Cam Newton to stay in Carolina. I picked Clowney to go to the Raiders and I picked Winston to go to the Chargers. All those answers are different now. I could tell you right now, I'll start off with Cam Newton. I think there's one team in the running for Cam Newton that makes the most sense. That's the Los Angeles Chargers. They have really no quarterback situation right now, other than, all right, no, no quarterback situation is a little bit of a put down. They got Tyrod Taylor. But is Tyrod Taylor a long-term answer? No. Cam Newton is a much better long-term solution. He's, he's 30 years old. You know, he's entering what some people believe is to be the, you know, the, the final days of his career possibly. He's had a couple of gruesome injuries. So maybe they could – this could be his last ride in the sunset. We'll we'll see however long. But it's a great fit scheme wise for head coach Anthony Lynn and for these receivers. Cam's got some real weapons around him. I don't think he's had these these kind of weapons with him in Carolina. He's got Keenan Allen. He's got Mike Williams. They also franchise tag their tight end Hunter Henry. They got Austin Eckler resigned. Cam's got some weapons, and I think the Los Angeles Chargers are that that team that desperately needs that quarterback. I wanted to say the Patriots, but I. I don't see it happening. I think the Patriots are going to go with the young gun this year. Jarrett Stidham or they'll go to the draft with someone. But Cam Newton, you are going to Hollywood, my man. That is my prediction. Davion Clowney, this guy thought he was going to get $20 million a year. 
and he, he the market is spe- spoke for itself. These teams do not want to pay him twenty million, uh, despite him being a edge rusher in the prime of his career. There is a very high possibility that he returns to the Seattle Seahawks, but I really don't see it. Um, I have a new team for Jadavion Clowney that I I could see now. I don't know about the money, but I think they can make it work. The Tennessee Titans make a lot of sense for Jadavion Clowney. And I think the reason for that is they just traded away their star defensive tackle, Jarrell Casey, to the Denver Broncos. The Broncos making some interesting trade moves this this offseason, but Jarrell Casey, arguably the leader of that defensive line, was traded away. Now they have a big hole. They could either address that in the NFL draft or they could pick up Jadavion Clowney. And honestly, no offense to these defensive tackles in the draft, I think Clowney is a much better option because, like I said, he's not even 30 yet. I believe he's 27 or 28, arguably in the, in the prime of his career. Why not go for it? And yeah, he, his, his, his asking price is just lowered from about $2, 3000000 million. So, honestly, if you have that room, I'd say go for it. And especially with trading Casey, I don't know what his contract terms were like, but I, I could see that as a big upgrade for the Titans. I think Tennessee makes an upgrade on defense and gets to Davion Clowney. Now, this, this, one is, uh, this one is an interesting one. You got a uh, – I've heard people throw this around – a defensive player of the year, Jameis Winston. Defensive player of the year. Just let that sink oh. in for a little bit. The Ooh. 30 interceptions. I really, that really, it really helps the defense there. Uh, but Jameis. The starting I don't know, line, I don't see him go to the Patriots. That's what I was about to get you. I think right now there, there are two teams that are, that are open for starting jobs right now. The Los Angeles Chargers, I've already talked about that with Kenyon. And the other one is the New England Patriots. But I'll be blatantly honest right now. The Patriots, no way in hell will go for Jameis Winston. Tom Brady has not thrown more than 14 interceptions in a season as a New England Patriot. Jameis threw 30 last year. 30! That's like, that's like, uh, that's half that. Over half. Oh, yeah, over half of that. I, you know what? Honestly, do I see upside in Jameis? Yes, he's young. He's got that eye surgery, which I really do think it could make a difference. We saw Vinny Testavardi around 20, 30 years ago really come back from that eye surgery. But I'm New England Patriots. I honestly, I, I, I don't think they're pulling the trigger on Jameis Winston. I think, like I said, they're going with a young gun, Jarrett Stidham. Or I think they're gonna they might draft a quarterback. So it really comes down to is a backup quarterback job. That's the best market out there right now. Where could he possibly go that he could maybe sit for a season or two behind and then possibly take over? I think there is one team that makes a lot of sense for him, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Ben Roethlisberger had just went uh, 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 surgery last year. I don't believe his elbow or his arm. He couldn't throw the rest of the year. Week two, he's done. Roethlisberger is not exactly young either. He's 37 years old. And I think his play has declined the last couple of years. And with the Steelers' quarterback troubles, you got Mason Rudolph, Devlin Hodges in there as well. I can't be too confident if I'm the Pittsburgh Steelers going in there and having them possibly take over for Roethlisberger, knowing that he could very well possibly get hurt and he's at the end of his days. I don't see him playing past his contract in 2021 when it ends. I think that's the best backup job right now for Jameis. They got they got a young defense, pretty talented. They got some young weapons on offense as well. I think Pittsburgh is a good job for him to kind of learn a little bit from Roethlisberger, a two-time Super Bowl champion. Uh, people seem to forget that. So you know what? I think I think he's gonna have to wait for a starting job, and I think the Pittsburgh Steelers are the best possible option for him at this point. Yeah, I I agree with you there for. Uh... For two of the three, two of the three players, I disagree with the Jameis Winston part, but I I just don't I could see him going to the Steelers just for like a backup role until Roethlisberger retires next in the next few years or so. But I I honestly think Jameis is going to go to uh, the Patriots because look the Patriots they lost their their star quarterback they need they need a oh. Uh, they need a quarterback, obviously, and I think, I think Jameis deserves a shot. 
to just prove himself because maybe last year wasn't his last year wasn't his best year because he and he threw 30 interceptions so I think he maybe he just needs that like restart button and just restart and uh I think the Patriots I I could see the Patriots giving him a second chance at that and then I gotta agree with you with Cam Newton going to the Chargers so I, I see it's like the only like best fit for him and uh, with Jadavian Clowney, I could see him going to Tennessee. Or I, I that's a tough one because I, I could see him going to Tennessee or I could see him going to uh, going to the Chargers maybe. Chargers got a pretty young defensive line. I, I'm, I'm not sure that they're going to willing, be willing to spend on him, but it's a possibility. Yeah, maybe just for that, like, veteran, like, presence. Just, yeah. like, help, help their line even more. I still think another team to watch out for for Clowney is the Dolphins. Uh, he rejected a $17 million deal from Miami, and that's what his asking price is now, 17 to $18 million. So Miami has spent a lot in free agency. They are in that full rebuild mode. They, they didn't even have to tank for Tua, and it's almost official they, they might get Tua. Dolphins are looking good. But honestly, I think Clowney has made it very clear that he wants to play for a Super Bowl contending team. And the Tennessee Titans proved it last year that they are a Super Bowl contending team. I think that, like I said, especially with the Jarrell Casey trade, I think that opens up a big spot for Clowney. I think he could go to Tennessee. Yeah, for sure. The Dolphins are making huge moves this offseason. I think they're, in a, they're definitely going to be a lot better. I don't want to jinx anything, but I think they will be better than they have been the past few seasons. Especially if they get Tua, that'll be that'll be good for them. And all those se- all the moves they've made this se- this off season has definitely improved every aspect of the Dolphins roster. Oh no, I 100% agree. I think they got better. And even with Tua, he says he's 100%. We'll see. And even if he isn't, they got Ryan Fitzpatrick. He can shadow behind him. It's not a bad option at all. Um, and, and especially. With Tom Brady leaving the Patriots, that AFC East division is wide open now. I will give a big advantage to Buffalo because Buffalo almost took them out last year, but it is it is more wide open than you think because Tom Brady is gone from the Patriots. And yeah. you look here, I think the Dolphins could easily be the most maybe the, not maybe the big winners, but easily they have spent the most money this free agency. There is no doubt about that. Yeah, hundred percent agree with you there. Since we're talking about the NFL, we got we got to go to this. Who won free agency in the NFL this year so far? Who won free agency? Am, am I picking? Are we picking with just one team or? Yeah, just one team. One team. That's a tough one, honestly. That really is a tough one. There's a couple teams I got in mind. Just a couple, but I think. I don't know where you're going to go on this route, but I, I think you might be a little more my track. I got to give a big shout out to the Arizona Cardinals. They have got a top three receiver now in DeAndre Hopkins. That air raid offense is going to be scary. I got to give another big shout out to the Buffalo Bills. They got a, they got a number one receiver now in Stefan Diggs. They're going to be nasty. But I think everyone probably knows that the winner in for agency is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They got Tom Brady. They got a quarterback who won't throw 30 interceptions this year. They got a quarterback who has not thrown more than 14, is very accurate with the ball, is great in the pocket. He's won six goddamn Super Bowls. Enough said right there. Yeah. They're going to be playoff they're going to be playoff contenders and with the playoffs I believe expanding starting next year. That increases their chances even more. They don't have to win the division. I mean, sure they're going to go for the division. The Saints are going to be nasty. I don't know if they're better than them at this point, but they can easily grab one of the three wild card spots. Buccaneers are easily contenders. And they still won seven games last year, considering Jameis threw 30 picks in six pick sixes. Yeah. Bruce Arians is a good head coach. He is. I think I think Tampa Bay is the overall winner in free agency, though. Big yeah. shout out to the Bills and the Cardinals. Yeah, like you said, the Bills, Cardinals, Saints, they've all got – and Dolphins, they've all gotten a lot better. But overall, it's it's simple. They're, 
there's not even a question who won free agent this free agency this year. It's Tampa Bay. They got the goat Tom Brady. Yeah, there's no, there's nothing bad to say about him. And like he's like you said, he's won six Super Bowls. He only threw 14 interceptions last year. He uh, 14. He didn't even throw 14. That's just his highest for a season. I believe yeah, he threw yeah. only eight last year. Yeah. So like he hasn't thrown anything more than 14 interceptions in a season. There's literally nothing bad to say about it. And so Tampa Bay, definitely the winner there. Yeah, I agree. And there was oh, there was something that was – something else I was going to say too and I lost my train of thought, but we can move on. Yeah, so uh, the next question is, uh, will the coronavirus affect any of the fall sports at all? Like NFL, NHL, NBA? MLB even, too. Uh, I'm going to go yes. I mean, see, it's tough. It really just depends on when they resume. You know, if if they – I don't see them going back before, like, the end of May. Um, because I believe the state of Virginia has a lockdown mode until, like, beginning of June. Other states can soon follow. I mean, I know we're we're in a situation where our state is shut down as well. But I, I'm going to go with yes because it really just depends on when they resume. And I feel like all sports are going to – it's in their best interest to start it at the best possible time. You know, they don't want to go back too early. They want to make sure ever you know – there's no, you know, m- more reported cases, yeah. no more. Um, and you know what? It's not so much the end of their season that's going to affect it. It's going to be the beginning because, you know, it's going to be, like you said, shorter off season, shorter free agency uh, draft, you know, going really, really fast. Um, and you know what? That's going to probably push the season back a little bit. So, you know what? As much as I hate to say, I got to go yes, because at the uncertainty of when everyone is going to start playing again, you gotta look at the big picture first. Yeah, exactly. And like you said, they don't want to go back too early. They want to wait for all the cases to go down. And what most importantly, besides like all the like the player safety and like fan safety, they want to play with fans in the stadium. That's like not even a question. So I think obviously it will affect the sports a lot, or maybe not a lot, but it will have some sort of effect on it, like especially if the NHL plays through, like, to like July, August, September, like they said they could, then that season will obviously get pushed back. I'm sure the same would go for the NBA and the NFL. We're still unsure of where everything's going to be at by that time. So I guess we'll just have to see about the NFL. But I think the NFL has the least amount of chance to get affected, but it still could depending on – how far we've all come since since now. Yeah, you're right. I think the NFL is at the least possible risk, but with the summer kind of beginning, like training camp and OTAs and preseason, it could still be going on and it could still be like not – you can't – it's not cleared. So I think football is the one sport that it's for sure will get a season, but like like we've been talking about, how much, you know, OTAs, training camp, preseason might be limited, regular season might be limited. But I think by the time we start reaching fall, it'll be over. Yeah. So. Yeah, for sure. So um, the next question we have is uh, really weird. So uh, what is your favorite color in the alphabet? <laughs> What's my favorite color? Yeah, in the alphabet. I'm confused by this question, honestly. Color in the alphabet? You go first, because I'm like... I got to go the color green. Green's my favorite color. So I just just got to go green. I guess so. You know what? Okay, my favorite color is green, too. So there you go. That's my answer. So our favorite color in the alphabet is green. So whoever came up with that question, it's interesting. 
I don't know how to respond to that. So my favorite colors would be G R E E N then. That that's one way to think about it. So maybe that's how they're asking. So I guess our favorite. Oh. I guess G R E E N. Sorry. Yeah. Favorite colors in the alphabet. So we got a few more before uh, we get to the would you rather questions. So um, this is a good one. What's our goal for the podcast? I'd say uh, it's a tough question, honestly. I wouldn't even really say there's a specific – for me, honestly, you could have – this is all opinion-based. I respect whatever opinion you got. This is all just me. I honestly don't have, like, a specific goal. I just want to see, you know what, hey, this is our start. Where can we – this is a learning experience. You know, if we – if this goes to great heights, awesome. But this is overall, I think this is a learning experience. And I think the number one, I'd say – goal for me is to just get the feel of it for just like talking uh, about topics and interviews and whatnot that's my number one goal but I'm not I'm not really so concerned I mean I don't get me wrong I think if we got like a million followers that'd be awesome of course but I think my personal number one goal is to just get the hang of it get the flow of it the best as we can it's a learning experience I think this is a first for both of us so that's just really where I'm. That, that's just really what I want to see. Like I said, I would, of course, I'd take a, a bunch of followers and whatnot. That'd be awesome. Yeah, exactly. I I really I really like that point. But for me, I think the I think the goal is just to have fun. It, just have fun with it. This uh, is this like you said. It's a learning experience, and like we didn't know what we we're getting into when we first started this. Like like in June of last year, but it's been, it's been really fun. We've gotten a ton of, ton of viewers, subscribers, and um, we've gotten a lot of pro athletes on here. We're hoping to get more soon. We've gotten college athletes on here. So I was just going to keep growing and it's a lot of fun. So as long as we're still having fun and I'm having a lot of fun with all this. So absolutely, I think that's, uh, and to get a feel of everything, like, I think we're finally getting getting a feel of everything going on. So, and we're more confident behind the screen. But overall, I think just having fun, it, it is a lot of fun. So, as long as we're enjoying it, then that's that's all you can do. I like that. I like that. Have fun. It's got to be up there. If you're not having fun, then maybe it's not worth it. Exactly. So, uh, I believe we have one more of these questions before we get to would you rather. How many interviews do you plan on having throughout quarantine and beyond? And what sports? So, I believe uh, we're just going to try to get as many interviews as we can through this quarantine since we have no idea how long this is going to last. Yeah. And so, we've been uh, getting in contact with some people and we just interviewed Frankie McClendon, who we just uploaded that that episode a few days ago, and uh, we we plan on getting more. I know we have a college player coming on soon. I want to I want to get some female athletes on here too, just like expand that platform and get them noticed more. Your like, bandit players, right? And yeah, hopefully, and like they they deserve all the credit they they don't get enough credit i think so they deserve they're they're a hell of an a hell of athletes they're they're amazing people amazing athletes there's nothing bad to say about them so so this platform i think will be great for them and, uh, you know what oh you know go ahead go ahead and uh just we're planning on getting like we want to get baseball too basketball football all these different sports We've only been lucky to get hockey so far, but hopefully that'll change soon. So, yeah. I, You know what? I agree with everything you just said. I'll keep it plain and simple. The more, the merrier. We, you're, you're exactly right. We have no clue how long this quarantine is going to take. So the more interviews we get, the merrier it'll be. That, more experience, too. That is true. Definitely. 
it's even though it's not Christmas worth. time. It just came in my head. It's definitely worth getting interviews. You learn a lot too. And it's not just for like, just for like fun, but you, I learn a lot from talking to them as well. And yeah, it's good to give yeah. them all, give them this platform and like help them like get more, get more fans as well. Gets, it, it gets you a sense to know where like each where person's came. like background is like where they came from and whatnot, what their story is. Yeah, exactly. So you want to get on to would you rather questions right now? Yeah, sure. Let's do it. All right. Sounds good. So, uh, First, would you rather – we'll probably do, like, five would you rather questions before uh, we end this one. So, uh, first, first would you rather question is, would you rather only be able to whisper or would you only be able to shout? No, oh, that's an easy one. Don't even have to ask me. I whisper or shout. Are you kidding me? I feel like my voice is just shouting all the time. Shouting. No question. You're loud. You're loud ass that- screaming right now. That is a no-brainer for me. It is shouting all the way. Yeah. So for me, even though I'm I'm a little like on the quieter side, uh, like in person, but I honestly would rather shout than whisper because when you whisper, a lot of people can't even hear you. So I was like, that'll be a lot. That'll be a weird because like you won't be able to hear what people are saying. And then if you shout, obviously you're going to be able to hear them. Hey, have your voice heard. That that is right. One way or the other, even even yeah. if it's even if it's a stupid comment, like some of mine are all the time. Have your voice be heard. Your voice deserves to be heard. Absolutely. So uh, going on to another question is a: uh, Would you rather have four feet or four hands? Four feet or four hands. This is a weird one. Four feet. Why? Uh, I don't know. Uh, the running part, I don't think it'd be that difficult. But I think for me, I'll just go with this route. Uh, my sport is tennis. It'd be pretty hard to grip a racket with just four hands or four fingers. Or wait, was, did I answer the question wrong? Wait, four, 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 four hands. hands. Four, oh, four hands. Yeah, okay. not four fingers. Oh, four, four hands or four feet. Feet. Oh, wait. Oops. Um, you got you guys can laugh at that all you want. Um, hmm. four hands or four. Feet? I don't know. I'll go four hands actually. Four hands. Yeah, I, I misunderstood the question at first. Yeah. Uh, no, I'll go four okay, hands. Yeah. I think I think four feet would be kind of weird. I mean, unless you want to be like a dog or something. I mean, maybe, maybe you'll be able to run faster with four feet. So True, but how are you – like, you're going to be walking, like like I said, like a dog, basically, if you got four feet. Maybe you, you, just, maybe you have, maybe you have like, two feet where you, where you have them now, and then you just haven't added two right next to it. So you'd just be so standing like normal. If you had four feet, would you still have – two hands as well like yeah uh, that, that's a weird question yeah I, I don't know i go four hands i'm, I'm gonna go four feet because uh i'll run faster and that's always good especially in a race and i'll probably win every race if i have four feet compared to everyone else yeah but just like how you said like four feet would be like a dog but i'd imagine it like just like how it is right now just two feet and then just two more added on right next to them so it wouldn't be like you're like in like a dog pose or something like that but it's an interesting question for yeah. sure out of the ordinary though yeah that is true so uh next question is uh would you rather have the ability to time travel or to stop time this should be easy To time travel or stop time? I had to think about that at first, but I think, yeah, it's kind of, I, I'd go time travel. Yeah, I, I can see that. But. Honestly, the, the thing that I think about for time travel the most, it isn't like going back and like, sure, I'd love to relive some stuff, uh, but 
for me, I think it'd be going back and like redoing my mistakes, you know, yeah. to maybe see like what, what, how it could make an impact on, you know, me in the future. But I yeah. think I just, cause stop time is like, hmm, maybe, you know, you don't get older or whatnot. It's interesting, but I think time, time travel would, I think it, it it's definitely more of a, yeah, like, sure. Easier option, I guess. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of in the same boat as you, but wouldn't you rather stop time to go face your mistakes? Because you could just go back a few, or if you stop time, like right before you do something, like you're not, you don't want to do, you could just easily fix that and then res- resume time. But you're saying stop time, meaning like you you can't go back in time. You're just yeah. stopping time and living in the moment. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So like right now, man, it could be like stopping time. Now it's interesting how it works. It's interesting how you look at it. But I had never heard anything about time travel. You stop time. You can't just oh go back. You know. Yeah, that is true. So I'll I'll actually go time travel like you and just like re relive some moments and just like fix some stuff that maybe you you have been wanting to fix that you've regretted. So I'll go I'll go time travel with time time travel with that. So uh, the next one is, would you rather live without music or movies? This is a good one. Wow. Man. That is really, really tough. Damn. I got to think about that, honestly. I think we – It's that's pretty hard. Yeah, for music sure. Music or movies? I, feel, I think I'd rather – live without movies because i i honestly don't particularly like staying like just like watching a movie just like sitting still what i mean obviously i'll watch movies but like i don't really like doing them when i could be doing other stuff but like i live with music like i could be playing like video games and i'll be listening to music i'll be doing a workout uh, i'll be listening to music even just on my own time i'm listening to music so i was like music is your like my life. You know what? Honestly, it's a very hard question. I got to agree with you though. I think I would, I would, it's, oh, it's so hard. Living without movies would be pretty tough. Cause I mean, you can't go back with classics like the Sandlot or any other stuff like yeah, that. that is true. Uh, but those music, are, are classics. I, yeah. I mean, even, and, and even goes hand in hand too. Like you, of course you got music and movies, but I got to go movies I got to live without them because music, I think it's a great point too. Um, the history of it, I, there's obviously history of movies too, but um, it, mu- I think music hits different people in different senses. Um, it could be the same for a lot of people, but it, it, it could have a lot of different feel uh, depending on the person, you know, the type of genre, you know, the artist, song, any, anything like that it could hit people in a way that, you know, you, you won't even know. And it, it means a lot to people. Um, and the first thing I think of for myself is um, growing up when I um, played baseball, I had these certain hype songs or not hype songs, but kind of get me pumped up. I'd say the, the uh, hype song really started for me with tennis and high school. I had my hype song, but just overall, I think music, we all like, listen to music just on a daily basis and like i said just with the different meanings it has different people um it's irreplaceable i mean movies are great movies are awesome all in all but like i said music i feel like has a special spot in, in people that like you can't really replace yeah. it's yeah, just mu- different <clears throat> yeah music just hits different Ex- that's exactly what i was gonna say are you reading my mind right now i guess so Good superpower. What uh, if you could read my mind? What uh, what am I about to ask now? I can't read your mind, so I don't have that power. <laughs> I got. I guess I'm the only one that has that power. There you go. I think. I think this. This will be our last. Would you rather question? And this is a really good, really good. Uh, would you rather question? So are you ready for it? I'm ready. 
Would you rather work in a great paying job that you hate or in a minimum wage job paying paying job that you love? It's a tough one. It is at first, but honestly, I got to go minimum wage paying job that I love. Yeah. I mean, sure, I mean, I love money. All, a lot of money is great, but if you hate what you do, you're always like, work. Yeah, the only thing good about it is money. You know, it's like, I don't like doing this. I mean, the minimum wage is like, yeah, I mean, it's, it's all right. But I mean, if you really – if you really have fun at your job, like that's a bonus. Like not a lot of people have fun at their job. I feel like having loving your job is, 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 is great. Like how many people grow up and say, Oh yeah, I want to be an accountant or I want to be, you know, like a, um, I don't know, just anything. Not a lot of people like what they end up doing for the good amount of their working years. It's not what they like envisioned. But if you really have that job that you're like, oh, well, I always wanted to be it or I, I really love it, that I think that is the most important thing. I mean, yeah, the money yeah, it is what it is. But for me personally, I think if you love your job, that's the number one thing. And I, I go loving my job any day over the money. If you get loving your job and a lot of money, whew, you got it made, man. It's a bonus, it's a bonus but I, I, for that type of question, a lot of money is great, but I can't, if you hate your job, then ugh, it's not worth it. Yeah. I go, exactly. loving, I go loving the job. Yeah, exactly. I think, I think you know where I'm going to go with this, and I'm going the same, same thing you did. So I'd rather have a minimum wage job paying that – a minimum wage paying job that I love just because if you love it, if you love it, then there's – It's worth money. it. It's worth it. I don't, I don't care about the money. Like obviously money is great, but if like I'm getting paid a lot of money just for like a job that I hate and that I despise going to every single day, it's like, is it really worth it? But if you're, even if you like don't make that much money, but you make minimum wage and it's a job you really, really love, then obviously that's going to be my go-to because I'll want to go into work every day. I'll do whatever it takes to put in the work and just like, I'll, I'll probably even work on my own when I'm not in the office anyways, but it's just like, I'd rather love it than hate it. Right on. Yeah. So uh, I believe this will conclude this episode. So is there any uh, closing thoughts you want to say, Tyler? No, um, other than, well, yeah, but, um, different kind of episode we did today. I like it. Um, I don't think we, I don't think we've ever done a Q and a episode, so different feel, but I like that. Maybe we should do the Q and a a little more often. Uh, I liked how it went. Uh, feel free to keep submitting your questions guys and whatever else you, you want to say, but I, I like, I like that a lot. Um, yeah. good episode kind of yeah. different than our typical, like, you know, jump into topics. I mean, sure. Sure. We had that, but we all, Got to stay to a script at some point. You can go off script on some of these topics like pretty easily, but I, I like the feel of it. Yeah, I, I really like this episode. It was more like a chill episode where we weren't really like like to go on like boom, boom, boom. It was just like just chill and relax. And maybe maybe episode fifty will bring back the Q and A episode. We're at thirty. This will be our thirty fifth episode. So. Jeez. 15 more and then we'll be at we'll be at episode 50 half a, half a century so it's crazy how we're almost at episode 50 and we'll soon be at episode 100 after that so um, do us uh, all a favor and follow our Instagram at on the spot sports at on underscore the underscore spot underscore sports so on spot sports with underscores between each each word separating each word and uh we appreciate all your guys support we're uh we're grinding out episodes day in day out so we're gonna keep bringing bringing the best op, best best episodes best content to the table every single every single episode so stay tuned for that and we have a 
bunch of good good episodes coming. I know we're interviewing one of our good friends who's a DJ soon, DJ Magic Matt. So that'll be a good episode. I cannot wait for that to happen. I I don't know where that's going to go. That's going to be a really, like, interesting episode. Yeah, for sure. And then we got the college athlete coming on soon sometime. And then hopefully we'll get some female athletes come on. So uh, I believe this will conclude the episode. So thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next one. See you guys. Take it easy during this time. Yeah, you keep be safe, be healthy, wash your hands, and we'll get through this together. Peace. Absolutely.